Hey guys, haven't done an intro for you guys in a while. We're going to be talking about the just entire DPS meta 9.0.5 and how it's changed. It, again, it's very small sample size, but just looking at the buffs in a raid environment and nerfs and uh, just seeing where everything's stacked up. Uh, just a small reminder, about 80% of my viewers that watch me are not subscribed. Typical low number, especially for a new YouTube channel. Just making sure if you guys enjoy the content to uh, subscribe and like. Thanks. So let's talk about DPS real quick. Because even if a class didn't get changed, it's possible that another class's buffs put other classes. Does that make sense? Like your class could have not been changed, but your place in the meta has moved because of another class's buffs, if that makes sense. And I actually think that did happen in a few cases. Okay, Hunters. Probably the one at the biggest topic of discussion. Uh, MM was nerfed by about 5%, but I think the nerfs are bigger than that uh, because they're nerfing what they were already like their single target got nerfed by five percent and the thing that made them so like so meta before was their ability to burst things inside of wild spirits it's actually possible that wild spirits in a four to five target like have all cooldowns up and get pi'd or not is still the best kind of damage for something like uh the commandos on on stone legion right if something that important were to happen on some second to last or end boss in like the next raid. I know we know nothing about the raid right now. And I think that's really important when talking about this meta stuff is, at least for me, all I care about is raid. And for this, I won't be talking about Mythic Plus at all, uh, but you obviously have to see the fights to know if they're good, right? Like for example, if the last two bosses of this raid were pure single target, Hunters wouldn't have been nearly as good in progression. They, you know, there's just a lot of really efficient, good cleave on the last two bosses for Hunter. Um, I think right now, when I looked at how they changed on Warcraft logs from one one patch to the next. If you want to look at something like, I guess the best way to look at single target in this raid is is probably hungering. Although it's a little weird because some melee usually lack behind because of the fact that you have to get off the boss a little bit and range can obviously be a little better there. But MM went from being like a top six class on this fight. Again, it's not the perfect example of single target. And again, Sims are dog shit. But they went from sixth to slightly below BM, right? So pretty big fall off and already like Marksman was nerfing Marksman single target in any way, whether, whether it was inadvertent because of the bug fix or not, was just such a bad nerf because they just, they, that was not a strong point of theirs. Single target was not a strong point, just straight up. Like they were fine, but they were not OP. In fact, they were frequently getting PI'd too. So these numbers are probably higher than they, or, or lower than they appear. They certainly uh, you know, got PI less than classes like Ellie Shaman and Feral Druid and all that stuff, even though PI for them isn't as great. So pretty big hit. And maybe the worst thing is that they fell behind something like BM Hunter. So here's the thing about BM Hunter. A Hunter main might be like, oh, it's fine. Like we have a new spec. We have like a new thing. Dude, I'm telling you right now, if you're a Hunter man, the worst thing that could happen to you this expansion is that BM becomes your go-to spec. If BM is your go-to spec, unless Turtle is absolutely required, I think your raid spot is just so in jeopardy. Again, you could have a situation where they release a raid, they do some tuning, maybe they add tier sets in a couple patches or something to where BM ends up being, and again, and before I talk about any of the rest of these classes, it's important to note that I may say your class doesn't look too good right now, but then it's randomly just tuned higher than everything else and it's good. I'm just, I'm throwing out all current tuning, all potential tuning, and I'm just going to talk about how classes are set up and why and what changed and like what could alter their raid spot assuming normal tuning for everything because that's the only thing you can do right although i don't anticipate that single target tuning will change too much that being said hunters not in a great spot because in my opinion if you lose the ability to do the burst aoe thing i think their spot in a raid is just so so heavily threatened not to mention the fact they're insanely squishy they're they're the squishiest class in a raid by a large margin all right so Forget Hungering for a second, let's go over and look at Stone Legion. Honestly, the fight, this raid that probably got Hunters their raid spot more than absolutely anything else, right? This was a 9.0, right? Marksmen, even though they have less overall damage, they have been, and just ignore the, ignore the survival hunter with four parses thing. Again, at the, at these percentiles, sometimes the weird shit can happen. And maybe survival is good, but honestly, I, I really doubt survival will ever be used for plenty of reasons. Uh, this is a 9.0. This is before the patch. Marksman's here. Now you're going to notice one major thing when I flip this to 9.0.5. And this is one of the situations where you talk about some classes being better than others, right? 9.0.5. Things, again, this is very small sample size because this is Mythic Stone Legion. This will change over time, but you have noticed one major thing, right? Ellie Shaman stonks are through the fucking roof. 
Ellie Shaman went from being middle of the pack on a boss like this to being like the top AoE class or very close to it. And even if it isn't, even if it was higher overall DPS than uh, Frost, Frost is still better because it's funneling into the targets you actually want to kill, where if you're ever earthquaking on Ellie, you're not really funneling much at all. You're obviously throwing Lava Burst procs into something, but that's much less than actually earth shocking it. But the thing is, the reason why Ellie is significant is I think Ellie directly threatens a Hunter's Raid spot. Ellie is different than Hunter in so many ways. They have sustained cleave rather than burst. They have spread out damage a little bit right now with Necrolord, and they have a, an okay amount of funnel. It's certainly not significant uh, or as it used to be, but it is, it is definitely not bad. And where you have Hunters being the squishiest class in the raid, Ellie Shaman might be the single tankiest class in the entire raid without HE death or immunity, which hilariously Fire Mage has both of, which would, you know, nothing's more tanky than a Fire Mage right now. But they, they're unbelievably tanky. Earth Ellie for a minute with the Conduit, it's a huge health increase. Plus with Primal Ellie, you're getting a 40% reduction on top of that. They're like right up there with Moonkins for just like insane tankiness without immunity. So... They, uh, they 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 fill in strengths that hunters lack, and right now they have higher single target than hunters and better AOE. The only thing they probably don't have than hunter is still Mark's Wild Spirits is probably slightly better at killing commandos than Ellie is. If I were to look at a bunch of logs and look at like commando shield damage, but that's a thing unique to this raid. It's possible they release a raid with no hard bosses requiring that exact niche that hunter was so powerful for this time. So. Obviously, we'll move on to Ellie next, but just to, just to sum up Hunter, Hunter Stonks are definitely, in my opinion, are torpedoing towards the ground. Their, their only benefit in Raid before was that initial niche. I think it's almost gone, if not gone. And again, BM might be good on some fights, I guess, but it's just, again, I think it's just a single target class, and there's other range classes that are just a little bit better. So I, I, I don't think BM would see a spot because if you're bringing BM, you would just bring something else. You'd bring a Fire Mage instead if you really needed an immunity. Hunter Stonks, sorry Hunters, going low. But, and again, dis maybe disclaimer for the rest of this. This is purely for like world first level of optimization. If you are random guild X and you have two or three Hunters, it won't matter to you at all. Okay, uh, so going back to the thing, we were talking about Hunter. I think we're going to move into Shaman because we already kind of alluded to it because I think Shamans and Hunters are pretty similar to like a raid spot that you would cover. Obviously, there's like raid spots that are set and then there's like raid spots where you'd bring specific things. I think Ellie Shaman definitely fill that role. So right now, again, back looking at 9.0 logs. Again, we, we, we're going to use 95 percentile as a base. I think 75th is a terrible thing to look at. 99th is maybe a little bit too specific. I think 95th is perfectly fine. Um, if you look at a boss like Hungering in 9.0, Ellie was already strong, right? And then they just got buffed. Uh, so 9.0.5 shows a couple other classes, obviously the bringing up of Assassination Rogue. But the point is, is Ellie has certainly strong single target, especially with the, the Lava Burst proc legendary after Earth Shocking. Uh, and if you look at boss damage throughout the other bosses, that, that kind of stays consistent as well. Never look at Sludge Fist for single target because Sludge Fist is just the worst boss to look at for single target. It, it, it appears like your run of the mill, like butcher single target fight they put in every raid. And it's an amazing fight. It's just really bad to look at for overall damage because there's just damage amps and classes with CDs at different times just throws a, a huge wrench into there. But Ellie's super strong right now. Like I said, they went from being a class that was kind of undervalued before. Although in progression, it actually made sense because the legendary that is enabling them to do this damage on Hungering didn't exist before Mythic, Nath Mythic Castle Nathria was defeated. They did not have the legendary that enabled them to do it. So they were kind of left out because of that. Kind of weird. And then one thing, they don't have an immunity, but most things you can immunity, you can also onk. Like, I think a good example of that is like Sludge Fist in this raid. For example, if you don't have a bop or if you already had a battle res, you could put your shamans at the back of the room on Sludge Fist, right? At the very back. And then they would be one of the four picked and then you could use an Ankh as a battle res, right? So Ankh, I think, is something underrated if you use it properly. It's a longer cooldown, but you can kind of plan around it. So that kind of fills that. But you also don't need immunities for a lot of fights. I mean, look at this raid, right? What, what, what was an immunity granting you on the last two bosses of this raid? Immunities haven't been, ever since Tomb of Sargeras, they've they've made immunities less important two, two mistakes they've made since then and and funny enough both of them are when they've made a new head fight designer um which kind of decides like how immunities are going to work was argus right after tumas argaris and then the one most recently which most most of you yeah in the chat uh nazoth ended up being this immune thing and th again that wasn't intentional so it always could happen because of that i mean when we were talking to them about that they just 
they didn't know we were going to do that and they talked about fixing it while we were on the boss but then decided that would have been a bad decision which it would have been but like they were not intending you to immune the sanity thing they gave you enough neck uses to get through the fight while soaking them all which was true you could have done that for the world first kill it was just obviously worse but there's always going to be fights with weird interactions with immunities like you can obviously doing it on you can do it on a nerva in this raid but it's an irrelevant easy boss and whether you immune or not immune the ads it doesn't really change anything the ads don't do anything you just cleave them down you just cleave them down get kicks and then the tank just ignores it uh hunters was the only immunity i think that worked on stone legion generals turtle was the only thing like bubble and block still gave you a wicked blade stack if you immuned the wicked blade but turtle didn't for some reason i don't know if they ever fixed that so like immunities in this raid especially for the last two bosses you could definitely have ran a shaman over any of those other classes and they would not have struggled because they didn't have an immunity uh, so that's the only problem with them. But they have great single target right now. They clearly have great sustained AoE on generals. Maybe, maybe one of the better sustained AoE in the entire game right up there with Frost Mage. While Rep Paladin probably has more burst, I would imagine, in a five to six target scenario than both of them do. But Ellie's clearly stonks are trending up. Like I said, like the funnel, the funnel thing with them is a little important. Again, I, I I would need to test it again. Keep in mind that this is all just my experience after seeing it one week in raid, looking at logs, obviously seeing it in our raids as well. But like Ellie does have funnel capability. There 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 is funneling happening, which which is usually very important on some fights. Like it can be something to where if they're like very close to the top single target, if they a theoretical boss in the future is there's a single target boss like hungering, but there's just like two ads on the side of the room. Ellie's going to be number one single target over all three of these classes you see above them. So there's. There's definitely some potential for that. I don't think Druid's really changed. Druid hasn't really changed in the meta. Uh, Moonkins are unbelievably overpowered. Again, they're right up there with Ellie, if not maybe slightly better defensiveness than Ellie. And it's not because of their actually, like, their innate cooldowns they have available to them. It's that they have, like, multiple endurance conduits that are just absolutely broken. They have very good single target. They have very good single target burst on a two minute CD with Convoke if necessary. You obviously usually line it up with your three minute stuff, but in a pinch, you could use it at the two minute. Council's a good example of that on the second attendant. They have Roar, although you have enough shamans now where Roar isn't as like valuable, but certainly good. And they have the best spread out dot damage in the entire game, something that I feel like people are still getting used to. No one's really ever thought about spread out cleave because for what, four years, five years, Shadow Priest have been the end-all, be-all, spread-out cleave class of all time. And then now Shadow Priest is completely different. Shadow Priest is almost exclusively a single target slash a little bit of cleave with their with their pet up. I mean, it's just totally different to think about it. But like Moonkin is just the kings of multi-dotting. Affliction are close, but Moonkin is certainly better. Moon Moonkins don't really need to be talked about too much. Insanely tanky so many different things that make the oh they're also they're also good at target switching too like just imagine that like the class that has the best spread out aoe also like i think where moonkin edges out warlock for example even though warlock is also insanely good is the fact that when something like a dutiful attendant spawns or something that spawns and needs to be burned in the future a moonkin is just top top tier with that like up there with mm hunter um and shadow priest weirdly enough at at swapping to like something that spawns and needs to die in a short amount of time again this isn't about mythic plus at all in raids that scenario i just described exists all the time where the affliction warlock is basically irrelevant on the attendant so moonkin's nuts don't need to talk about it feral druid keeps doing really really good single target in multiple scenarios but the bad thing about feral druid is the recent venthyr assassination rogue which although this is only one week of sample size i actually see assassination rogue actually going up in its rankings for damage to bosses when you look at basically any boss i think assassination is is just feral druid with an immunity i think feral unironically before these assassination buffs could have found a raid spot in a mythic raid for the for ideally for the first time in a very long time almost almost mist of pandaria i believe but with assassination being as good as it is right now and more importantly assassination having better execute they just become rogues just become a feral feral druid with similar single target and immunity and execute damage which is just going to outclass feral going over to dk so this is one week of logs people have already been playing frost on stone legion so when you look at an important aoe fight like stone legion you're gonna see frost up there but that's because they've already been playing it honestly to be a dk player right now obviously you have amz we've been talking about it for a while but assuming you can get weapons for it and you'll have weapons going into the raid at least from this raid if you've been farming enough 
DKs are just so multifaceted right now. Like you have Unholy, which is like, they used to be pretty bad at target switching. They still kind of are, but at least with your like empowered pet, you're at least somewhat good at it. So that was their big weakness before, but Unholy comes with Execute. It comes with mass AOE with Epidemic. It obviously has all the other tools that DKs normally have, but like, and just pure single target and, and Lust Burst is Unholy's niche right now, where Frost has gained a very valuable niche with recent buffs, where specifically on a two minute cooldown, so like on a boss like Stone Legion Generals, you know, you're just going to like destroy the commando, the skirmisher set at the beginning and then the commandos, at least the strat that most people do. So they're really, really good at four to five target sustained cleave. It's going to be less used, but also two hand frost. I've heard there's some weird shit with like two hand frost running the night fate thing with like a uh, two target cleave obliterate. But I think that sounds a little weird. Just something I've heard and haven't seen. Just wanted to mention it. But they have like two distinct things. So I think... Anytime you're looking at playing a DPS class and you're a player who doesn't identify as a Frost DK or an Unholy DK, you just identify as a DPS DK and you play whichever one's best based on the scenario, I think DK just fills a lot of slots for like what, what it's good at right now. So I, I, I think DK is still in a really good spot. It's kind of fallen off specifically on a lot of like single target fights, although it's certainly good. Uh, it's just that Rogue's just like a little bit better. But, you know, they have AMZ, so they're going to be in the raid. All I'm saying is, you know, Unholy... DKs are probably going to be in the raid, right? Just, I think they just have a little bit more tools now than they did in Nathria with the frost buffs. Yeah, also, if if a bunch of ads spawned exactly on a two-minute cooldown and you had to kill them every single time, I feel like Venthyr Frost with Breath would just be, like, the most value shit in the game. Like, it's just possible that exactly enough ads spawn to where that's good on a Mythic Raid boss. Again, it's very specific, but that could just be so fucking insane. Demon Hunter... Uh, don't need to talk about this long. Demon Hunter is good. They are obviously not great single target. They're clearly good in cleave scenarios. It's one week. I'm not sure. They're just a really valuable class to have in the raid, and they're a raid buff. Vengeance is obviously powerful, but there's other good tanks too. I think there's a chance you see Havoc in the upcoming raid, as it is right now. I think they're certainly in a better spot than when Nathria came out. They probably need some more targeted single target buffs to be like an in to stack them. But I, I, I actually, I actually think it's possible that. Uh, Havoc Demon Hunters get played next raid. I don't need to look at it too much. I know that they changed their... They added the Necrolord Covenant, and I don't know if people have experimented with that yet. I don't know if it's better. I know they, they gave them a better Legendary. The first raid we did in 9.0.5, we had Trill playing Momentum, I think, and it was doing really well using Chaos Theory, like not even the new one. Um, but I know the new one was supposed to be like really, really solid. So I think I think over time, seeing some changes there would be good. Uh, okay, so after Demon Hunter is Priest, Shadow Priest. I don't know if you guys have seen some of the logs... But, like, think about what is the most important phase of this entire raid. It's P3 Denathrius. And, or at least damage-wise. I guess you could argue Cleave on Stone Legion. But that's, like, I feel like Stone Legion is less of a damage fight and much more of a control fight. Even though it's harder now with gear. Like, I feel like it's that. It's just about doing damage in the last phase of uh, Denathrius. And Shadow Priest is just absurd at that. I don't know if it'll show up on the, like, damage to boss logs like a little bit less but if you just isolate it to the last phase shadow priest is dunking on people right now like almost 8k dps just to denathrius from p3 to dead so their single target is very wild they are different than they've ever used to be we kind of touched on this earlier where they have you know they do, they're not the multi-dot class and, and honestly maybe that's in shadow priest's benefit because i feel like the way that i've looked at them nerfing and changing shadow priest over the last couple years has been they were always so much better than every other class that spread out dots that they could never make their single target good enough. Because if they ever did, then they just became a god class. Like they had the single target plus the plus the dots on other targets, which also increased their single target damage. Right? Like that was just broken as hell. So now they've basically removed that um, to where they're basically a single target plus like some on the boss cleave class um, with the new legendary. But their single target is out of control insane. It is so good. It is so good. It's so good. I can't get over how good it is. Now, they are one-dimensional. So I think I, I think a good thing to relate Shadow Priest to is kind of like Affliction Warlock and Old Year, where I really doubt any World First comp, even if this was an exact representation of pure single target, which it isn't, by the way, because it's a weird boss. But if this was an exact representation of single target, I still think you wouldn't bring a ton of Priest. I think you'd bring two to three max in an ideal scenario. Because they need to be supported by class that that fill in their weaknesses, right? 
to just be a more overall balanced comp. Again, it depends on the boss too, right? Like if a boss, if a last boss was purely single target ever, no ads, uh, like some bosses have been in the past, then yeah, you might, you might just play a bunch of priests. But I mean, like for a whole raid though, you can run into problems. Like the reason I brought up Affliction Warlock and Old Year is like, yeah, you could run five locks, but if you ran five Affliction Locks on Fetid in progression, if you guys ever did that fight, you would have never been able to kill the blobs. You needed enough BM Hunters and Arcane Mages to have CDs up every time to fill in the weaknesses of the Affliction Locks only having good damage every three minutes, right? So that's kind of what Shatter Priest is now. I think it's insanely good. With the latest change, they made their uh, a legendary very close and single target, the not Talbadar's one, but it also gives them the ability to like do really good cleave when their pet is out or something like that. And I asked our raiders about it, like what, how it actually feels to use it and like what their damage is like. And they're like, it's really competitive, like AOE on, on that CD. Yeah. Shadow, Shadow Flame Prism. So them also gaining a niche of doing on demand short ish CD cleave around a boss on top of their single target. They just became, instead of a one dimensional class, they just became a situationally two dimensional class that has the best single target in the game. That's fucking broken. They're also tanky as fuck. They have a great cooldown. They have huge self healing. They have a, I don't know. I don't know. I don't even, honestly, I don't even consider Vampiric Embrace. I don't even think it's that good, but you know, I guess it's worth mentioning. The class is nuts. Uh, if, if Shadow Priest is not looked at before the next raid and I'm okay if they do or don't, we have a ton of really good Shadow Priest players. If you want to make it a Shadow Priest meta, let's fucking get it. But that class is very, 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 very good. Uh, very good. I, if, if a raid were to come out tomorrow with just a random assortment of just, you know, run of the mill bosses, mid of the middle of the raid end boss, Shadow Priest would be all over the place. They'd be very good. Let's see. What else we got? We did Priest Paladin. It, uh, only DPS spec to talk about here is Rhett. Rhett seems really good. It obviously does. It, it's probably the best burst in the game now with Wild Spirits nerfed. I think. I think Rhett burst AoE is better than Hunters, not overall. Or no, and overall, but yeah, I think. I think they have a spot because of that. Although, you know, we've had this conversation before. There's a lot of really strong melee classes and Rhett. I mean, if you look at it historically, when has Rhett been in the world first race? It's been for a few reasons. Uh, Rhett was in uh, for the world first and second kill, I believe, of Jaina. And one important thing on Jaina is your tanks died and they gave them a really OP like 30 second buff that increased their damage done and reduced their damage taken. But we knew going into the raid that someone was going to die in the last phase. So anytime Rhett is even remotely good, when you know for the hardest phase of the hardest boss, they're going to be buffed insane and probably be the best class in the game at that phase, then they're obviously worth a spot for the whole raid. Same thing happened on Ashara. You have people get DPS buffs in the last phase and they get a really, really insane buff, right? We just talked about it. Okay. They have removed that and now all they get is a wings proc, which is good, but not nearly as good. So their kind of niche or value from last expansion was definitely nerfed. Uh, I think they would need a little bit higher single target to be considered being brought just all the time. Hungering is a terrible boss to look at for Rhett though, because you just run away from the boss, but... You know, other melees certainly seem to thrive in that scenario as well. So I don't think Rhett's position in the meta, unfortunately, has really changed at all. They certainly could be brought, but it's going to be dependent on the boss, not not dependent on them. And generally speaking, being a class that has to rely on other factors to be valuable is obviously a worse spot to be in where you're a class that's so good at something that you basically make your strat around it, right? So... I think it's a fringe niche class at the moment. I don't know if you'll see them. Moving on. Rogue. So I think assassination buffs, again, this is early sample size. At least I know for a guild like ours, so I can't speak about others, just completely anecdotally. Um, our rogues weren't even like ready for assassination this week. One of them was with like basically no renown, and he was in our raid last night, our third raid, and he was fucking demolishing bosses. Right, so the stuff you see on logs this week is again, I think people are like just swapping to Venthyr. It's not like they pre-swapped. And I think people are just now catching the wave. So I think you're gonna see Assassination really climb the climb the ladder. Uh, and in fact, if it competed or even beat Shadow Priest on pure single, I wouldn't be surprised. They obviously come with an immunity. We talked about this earlier. 
Now, Outlaw is probably the overall better spec. Like, if you were just to look at a whole raid, like, they're certainly better on a boss like Stone Legion where you're AoEing, some meme fights like Sun King. Like, yeah, Outlaw is going to be better than Assassination. Here's the problem with Outlaw. If you want to play Outlaw Rogue, you would just bring another melee. There's multiple melee that AoE better than Outlaw Rogue does and have other benefits. Frosty K does as good or better AoE than Rogue. They have AMZ. They have the ability to swap to Unholy if the execute phase randomly becomes harder. Unholy is also close to Outlaw and AoE, right? So the, I feel like Outlaw has probably gained a spot because of Windwalker kind of falling off a little bit in that regard. But like I said, and also you don't have to necessarily swap melee for melee. You know, if Outlaw is like, oh, well, Assassination is not good for this fight. I feel like you're much more rather to to bring in a AoE ranged cleaver that, or melee cleaver than you are to just swap from assassination to outlaw that's my opinion but that's again that's raid based i don't care about mythic plus i know outlaw is probably better in mythic plus is certainly on fortified weeks but again i don't give a fuck about that at all mini game don't care in raids assassination has tremendous value because it fills a few niches it has execute which is the most important niche to have for mythic world first rating and it has an immunity and it just, you know, if it's just a class, you can just sit on the boss and just destroy the boss. Anytime a class is tuned to be super high single target, it it's it's looking really, really good. And I think it's only going to get better with more time into this patch. Don't have really too much more to say. Oh, yeah, buff sub. Sub's really fun to play. Give sub funnel back. What is sub even supposed to do? Like, wh where, with the assassination buffs, where is sub supposed to, like, shine? It had a perfect niche. It was the melee you went to for funnel damage. Was it too overpowered? Yes. Zul was out of control. But instead of nerfing it to still have value in that area, you just destroyed it and made them irrelevant for like three years. Buff sub. Change sub. Do something. Sub, sub right now has really honestly no, no real reason to be in raids. And it's a really, really well designed spec. It just should be better than what it is. So that's, that's all I have to say on that. Warrior. Okay, Warrior, way different than the beginning of Nathria. I feel like people ran Arms Warrior because Arms was so perfectly designed for Denathrius, but it was so weak for the rest of the raid. That's why we ran a Prot Warrior, so we had the ability to sub them out. In my opinion, that was a good move. Fury is, is destroying shit right now. Pure single target, it's not the best, but they are just annihilating shit on, like, just pure cleave. They're really tanky. I think... Especially with Prot Warrior being a the Prot Warrior Necrolord banner burst situation certainly not being as good as what we initially thought. I think it's very likely that your raid buff this raid will come from a DPS warrior, in my opinion. So we'll have to see how that plays out. But I feel like people haven't seen it yet. Maybe it doesn't show up on logs. I'm just saying, again, it's anecdotal. But a lot of our raids cover basically every class. And all of our players are very near the top level of skill. And Fury Warrior fucking shreds. It it owns. So definitely look for that to go up over the next couple weeks. And I think has a stable raid position going forward. Uh, yeah, Fury's very good. Don't have much to say there. We talked about Ellie earlier. We'll talk about Enhance. I actually feel weird about Enhance. Because this statement is normally true. The lesser played classes of the game historically. The Enhancement Shamans, the Windwalker Monks, uh, the Ret Paladins, the, you know, just the Survival Hunters, all that stuff. Anytime those specific specs are doing really well or if they're doing poorly their actual performance is usually higher because virtually no good players play them you know like if you're a sick player in x guild and you care about your guild's progression and you have the ability to play another character more times than not that player swaps off of enhancement main you know this isn't 2005 people aren't as attached to their mains as they used to be right like they're gonna play a class that's historically better t raid in and raid out they're just gonna play something better so generally speaking, those classes actually perform better. I can tell you anecdotally, very anecdotally, I take this for however you want, Impact on his Enhancement Shaman for the past like two to three weeks in our raids, since it finally got gear, has been doing really well. Uh, it was topping Denathrius going into the last phase. It was uh, the single target certainly isn't bad. Like they, it was just like a nice valuable spec for every class. But enhancement, as always, is kind of tied to tied to other classes' success. We just talked about this earlier, where it's kind of weird to be, it's kind of weird to be in a spot where your raid spot might be dependent on other classes being good. This isn't the case right now, but could be in the future, where if Arms Warrior is buffed, and Arms Warrior ends up being a like top tier DPS spec, which by the way that happens more than once in expansion historically, where Arms Warrior is just insanely good. Arms Warrior gets 
a 7% increase from Wind Fury. There's some classes that have a good bit. So Demon Blades, Demon Hunter, at least the Sims I saw at the start of the expansion was like 35 to 4%. Might be higher now. Again, I have not checked Sims recently. I don't care if it's any different. But a lot of the other melee specs were a little bit lower than that. I think there was one other one I forgot that actually was like pretty decent. I think maybe one of the rogue specs actually got a good amount from it. But the point is, is if you if you have two arms warriors, a Havoc DH, and like uh, Outlaw. Oh, no, yeah, Outlaw and Rogue doesn't matter. You're not going to play that. Okay, let's say Assassination Rogue. Okay, so you say you have your Assassination Rogue in a party with Wind Fury, two arms warriors, and a Havoc DH. You can add 14% of the two arm or 7% each of the two arms warriors damage close to 5% of the Demon Hunter's damage, and then 3% of the Assassination Rogue's damage, then you just put that made-up damage on top of Enhancement, and then their damage starts to look really fucking good. So, yes, their single target, not great. Certainly a very, very bottom tier. Uh, again, Hungering is a kind of weird boss to look at. They have to run out of range. No idea how their cooldowns line up. But I have seen them work well in a raid. I've I've seen them do well. So, like I said, I, I think I think Enhance's raid spot is... is way more dependent on what other classes are good around it and it's also just a melee slot so you'd have to be like running a lot of melee and then you would add a melee to buff those melee and then holy paladins are also good and then you start talking about having like eight plus melee and i think all of you know when you look at fights like that i mean that this is the issue for the longest time right enhance is just a victim of the fact that there are half as many melee spots as there are melee specs Whereas ranged players, there are more ranged bot spots in a raid than ranged specs. That's why classes like Survival and Rhett and Enhance and Windwalker historically are the way you think they are. Because there's just almost no melee spots. And there's a few melee that just have insane utility and better class design. To where typically in world first comps, which a lot of you guys derive your idea for class balance off of, they just don't make the cut. And it, it's not as much to do with them as it is to do with like how the game works in that way. I think Enhance is fine, certainly. It's not looking too hot, but I mean, it's looked good in our raids, which is really all I care about. And Wind Fury is kind of broken if certain classes are good. Moving on, Monk. Monk was not, it's, I mean, it's fallen off on the statistics a lot. That's for sure. Uh, certainly single target. Look from 9.0. They're like middle of the pack. And then obviously the single target nerf was a little bit. They drop a little bit below. Also, other classes got buffed. Uh, when you look at a boss like Stone Legion, that's when it starts to get real. Uh, Windwalker, obviously so strong with constant procs. Windwalker moved from like third on this. Again, one week of sample size down to about seventh. Again, that is, it's not small, right? Like that was kind of their niche. They were never the best class at, at just boss damage in this expansion. Uh, they started off really strong because Verse is a really good stat for them. PvP gearing system was insane. They were guaranteed a 233 weapon before you ever stepped into Mythic if you got 2400. And then ever since then, other classes that were initially using that PvP gear that's bad for them with Verse not being good, they kind of scaled back. Windwalkers just kind of got outscaled by other classes. And then on top of that, they inadvertently nerfed Windwalker by just fixing some bugs with them. So it definitely wasn't a good change. But Windwalker is one of the rare cases where you actually need that buff in a raid. Well, you don't need it. In fact, it's one of the most sittable buffs. In a, in, a, in a mythic world first race, I don't think you could ever sit the priest buff. I don't think you could ever sit the what the things that Warlock brings. You could never sit a mage. You could never sit a demon hunter. You could probably never sit a warrior, but you could sit a monk. For example, the, the warrior buff battle shout even buffs a lot of spell-based abilities that just go off your attack power, like things like Unholy DK, Havoc DH, and like Frosty K and other other random rets that do like a bunch of like magic damage. A lot of that stuff is still modified by attack power, where Mystic Touch is only literally physical damage. Some of these classes are only half physical damage, right? So if you're running very low melee, you actually can sit Monk. It could be better to not run a Monk. But again, right now, the meta is not like that at all. Certainly with how many Hunters are run in progression, having the Monk buff was extremely good. And Monks are really good. But it's going to be interesting to see how you fill that slot. Uh, again, we haven't really talked about healers yet or tanks, but this is kind of relevant. Mistweaver is doing a little bit more healing than before. Again, as you all know, very unlikely that that class gets brought for all of the reasons you already know. Brewmaster right now, I feel like is also... So Windwalker was the clear choice before. If you needed to bring a monk buff to your raid, it was Windwalker for all of the reasons you already know. Brewmaster is not the tankiest tank. It's actually not in the top three. They do pretty good damage, um, so the damage is an argument, but it's, I don't believe it's the best damage. I'm pretty sure Paladins are the best at just, like, all bosses, just, like, a random thing. 
Okay, so Guardian and Prot are looking like... Uh, that. All bosses is bad because there's like meme AoE bosses. Like, let's look at like Hungering. Okay, they're like third, okay? They're third. Inerva, they're, th they're four. Okay, so you're getting the point, right? Like, Brewmaster is not top, top tier at damage. I can tell you from our tanks playing them and me playing it in beta, they're like right outside of the top three in defensiveness. So they're not even like a top tier defensive tank. They bring the raid buff, but they don't bring any utility. We're talking about like Venice DH bringing a much more desirable raid buff, right? You're talking about Blood Decay is bringing AMZ and being way more tanky than Brewmaster. Vengeance Demon Hunter being more tanky than Brewmaster. Prot Warrior bringing a raid buff and being as tanky as Brewmaster. Damage is pretty... Uh, they're, they're not... I mean, I'm pretty sure Brewmaster has way more boss damage than Prot Warrior does. Yeah. Uh, but if you want to bring damage from a tank, you're just going to play a Prot Paladin and make it work. Right? So there's no damage argument. I, I feel like... And the reason why I'm bringing this up now is I feel like when you're looking at Windwalker, you have to, you have to keep in mind that that buff kind of needs to get brought to raid... And because of that, you need to look at the best possible option. So even though Windwalker has fallen off, Brewmaster is certainly not exceptional at anything in a raid. In fact, it might be one of the least valuable tanks to bring to your raid comp overall. And because of that, Windwalker just has to be slightly better than that. The only caveat to that is that this means bringing an extra melee where, you know, there's always going to be two tanks. So again, it's going to be totally dependent on the raid. And I, I think I think it's going to take people some time to learn up Brewmaster. I still believe a lot of people ran Brewmasters and Nathria just because they were kind of being stuck in like last expansion. I like to look at everything like as it is now and not how it was in the past. Also, Brewmaster was heavily overrated last expansion too, outside of very few fights. But yeah, I think you'll see a lot less Brewmaster play going forward. And maybe another reason people play Brewmaster a lot is just because you need the buff in a raid and Windwalkers and Mistweavers are usually very rare. You see a lot more Windwalkers now because they were so good, but... Windwalkers and Mistweavers are very rare, so people just have gotten used to bringing that buff from this, even though it's usually not the most valuable thing if being done optimally. So, again, long thing about Brewmaster, but also that is a Windwalker thing. So, who knows about Windwalker? It's still... I still think the nerfs hurt it more in Mythic Plus than it does in Raid. And then the last two. Yeah, these classes are fucking broken. Let's talk about Mage first. Uh, So, Mage... Again, I don't know how much to think of... The current, uh, let's see, let's get out of tanks here. Let's go to all classes. Let's just go to damage 95th percentile over a range of two weeks. Talk about something like Stone Legion. So there's been a couple of really insane arcane logs. It's been Sludge Fist, but it's very small sample size. But this was happening before the patch as well. Thanks for the tier three, Mixy, MCZ. Again, very small sample size, but very high average. Arcane is one of the biggest baits in raiding since after HFC. It's something that routinely sims higher, again, sims, but it sims higher than fire, but all sims are done with no movement. Fire moves infinitely better than arcane. Fire has execute. Fire is almost always better than arcane, even if they sim the same or arcane appears better, just for a progression scenario. Now, right now, arcane clearly has a couple of strong niches. They're doing really well on Stone Legion. Not really sure why. They're doing well there, and they're doing well on Sludge Fist. Haven't really looked at them on Denathrius at all, but Denathrius is execute, so if you're playing arcane, you're just trolling or padding on like P1 or P2 or something. A parse is a 95% is literally one insane log. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. Low, low sample size really throws that out of whack. I just wanted to talk about Arcane first and just mention the disclaimer that it's usually very overrated because of that exact thing you're talking about right now and the fact that it's no movement. Uh, I just remember, I remember we pulled Ilganoth. You know, obviously we did a much different strat than most of you guys and our damage was very important. That boss was very, very hard and Fired Up was playing Fire. And then he was like, well, you know what? If we had an extra CD every single time the boss was up, we would actually push before this second set of lines went out. So he tries Arcane for a couple pulls. And just watching his POV and noticing how much damage he lost when he got any mechanic as Arcane versus whether he was able to stand still made me realize just how fundamentally bad of a progression class Arcane is, like, compared to Fire, at least. Like, Scorch is actually insane. All right, so small disclaimer about Arcane. Fire and Frost are the two, are the two main things for mage right now and honestly since the frost buffs when was the last time a bunch of mages were ran four or five in nihilotha four in eternal palace for us not only are mages so good but we were talking about stacking priests earlier potentially if they were so strong mages like fill in all the holes that shadow priests have and they're also unkillable have unlimited movement basically again we talked about this with dk if you see yourself as a not a fire mage or a frost mage, but as a mage to where you can just play whichever based on the scenario. 
Frost is the singular best funnel in the entire game. If you have to, they obviously have great AoE, but even more importantly than AoE and raid is funnel damage. If you have the ability to, you know, on Stone Legion, it would be having your Frozen Orb be ticking on three skirmishers that you maybe don't care about, depending on the fight. On Stone Legion, you do, but like on a theoretical fight. And then you just throw all your Ice Lances into the Generals or the Goliaths. That's insanely valuable. If you just have just your straight up two target cleave on Frost is probably the best in the game, two target cleave with Frost. Man, I like Frost is just so strong right now. Like like I think I think Fire might be better in overall single target. I haven't really looked. Uh, I imagine Fire's probably ahead on Hungering because of the ability to move during the consume where Frost is a little weird with that. But Frost Mage single target is also fine. But when you start looking at something like Anerva when ad spawn, Frost is going to be better. If you look at something like Generals, Frost is certainly going to be better. Again, kind of small sample size one week, ton of parses in either direction. 1500 for fire, 37 for frost, way more fire mages. But that's because people are just not changing specs, right? Like if you play both, I think frost is insane. Fire obviously has the mass AoE element, much less important in raids. It only exists like two times in this raid where mass AoE matters at all for fire. But it has execute, it has insane damage while moving, and it has one minute burst cooldowns. That's something that frost doesn't have. So frost and fire, when used properly and together, I feel like our mages are just, they're very, very powerful very stackable you could i mean i could honestly see my if i was doing stone legion generals progression right now with current tuning there would be a legion of frost mages on that fight uh okay moving on i think warlocks in this patch for a while were considering playing destro and i remember a couple of our raiders actually played destro multiple weeks because of the affliction nerfs and then they reverted those reflection affliction nerfs basically this isn't new because warlocks are always fucking insane at everything but man is warlock stupid like <laughs> they have like good mass aoe they have good burst aoe like uh, thd this raid and our generals clear tied a hunter with pi using wild spirits on commando shield damage as an affliction warlock they have the second best spread out aoe in the game with dots they have the ability to cheese certain stuff. So like on Denathrius, for example, if you found a way to actually dot the ad that's shrouded without gating over there, six warlocks with unstable, or with, uh, sorry, with absolute corruption could kill all four Denathrius ads without ever swapping to them. And you could have made a strat around that, for example. They have like cheese things where you could just run a bunch of warlocks, dot it and ignore it. They're very tanky. They have some of the best single target in the game. They're one of the best targets for PI with all their CDs up. And also Affliction is like one of the best classes for movement as ranged. Because a lot of times you can just move and keep putting your dots up and you don't feel as bad moving. Where like Shadow Priest sucks at moving. Not to mention they're a class with a raid buff so you need one. Don't get tricked into thinking Warlocks are not a raid buff like a Mage's Arcane Intellect. They absolutely are. If you're raiding without summons, wipe recovery, health stones, you're fucking trolling. They're they're absolutely a raid buff you that's required. Yeah, war warlocks are it's almost not fair. Uh so there's not really too much to look at, you know, they own at every fight. Also one of the best classes for mechanics cuz they have ports. Nothing has changed there. <laughs> Affliction is just still insane. I don't know where Destro is right now. It looks like Destro kind of fell off, but again, this is one week, so I don't know if people were playing Destro. In the few weeks that I saw our warlocks play Destro, it was very good. Uh and Destro Again, if you see yourself as a Warlock player and not just an Affliction player, it's hard to imagine not playing Affliction right now with it being so strong, and you likely won't not play Affliction. But Destro fills the one thing that Affliction is terrible at. Affliction is fucking awful at target switching. Dutiful attendant damage. It is Im so important for that thing to die fast, and Warlocks can do absolutely fucking nothing to it. And Destro is historically one of the best classes ever at doing that. They're probably not the best right now, in a short burst because of priest but they're insane so if you ever got to a fight where you needed to run warlocks for x but target switching was super important you would just play destro and it would be fine and it would solve the problem so warlocks are in without needing to say it an insane position the reason you don't need to say it is because that's literally always true the people who design and balance warlocks at blizzard fucking love that class and if you play one it will always be good